Now let's move on to the case studies of transportation. We'll be dealing with the three methods, Northwest Rule, Least Cost Method and Vogel's Approximation Method in this video. This is our question. A manufacturer has three distribution centers namely X, Y and Z. These centers have 7, 9 and 18 units of his products respectively. His retail outlets A, B, C and D requires 5, 8, 7 and 14 units respectively. The transporting cost in rupee per unit between each center and outlet is given below. Find the initial basic feasible solution with the three methods. I have formulated a question into the required format and now we will proceed on to find the initial basic feasible solution. The first method that we are going to try out is the Northwest rule. As I said in my previous video, the first thing that we need to do is check whether our case study is balanced or not. Let's check whether this one's balanced or not. The total of supply is 7 plus 9 plus 18, total comes up to 34. And the total of demand is 5, 8, 12, 13, 20, 34. So this is a balanced problem. Now we'll proceed on to find the initial basic feasible solution. So as per Northwest rule, we start from the cell at the northwest corner and start off by allocating the maximum permissible amount and move further. So here obviously the cell at the northwest corner position is this one. And the maximum amount permissible here is the least of the total of supply and total of demand. So here it's 5. So we allocate a 5 here. That leaves us with these two columns cancelled because this column cannot accommodate any more. Now which is the next cell in the northwest position? It's this one. Here we can allocate either, sorry, here we can allocate the least of either 8 or the balance which remains after allocating 5 to this row which is 2. So we allocate 2 here. So by allocating 2 there we are cancelling out this row as the total 7 has been allocated. Now the cell in the northwest position is this one. Same principle we can allocate either the balance of what remains here which is 6 or 9 whichever is lower. So we allocate 6 here. With that we cancel out the cell. Now this is the cell in the northwest corner position. Here we will allocate the lowest of either the balance which remains in this row or the total of this column. So with the balance which remains here is 3 and the total of the column is 7, the lower being 3, we allocate 3. With that we have allocated the maximum permissible amount for this row and we cancel the remaining cell out. And what remains are these two cells. Here obviously what we can allocate is the balance of 7 after allocating 3 which is 4 and here what we can allocate is the balance which remains in 18 after allocating 4 which is 14 which also happens to be the demand for that column. Now what we have done is we have found out the initial basic feasible solution. Now to find the initial basic feasible solution amount what we do is we take the occupied cells and multiply the cost elements with the amounts we have allocated. So here our initial basic feasible solution would be 19 into 5 plus 2 into 30 plus 6 into 30 plus 3 into 40 plus 7 into 4 plus 20 into 14. One thing that I left out which should have been told before going into finding the initial basic feasible solution is to check the degeneracy of our problem. To check degeneracy, we have a rule which goes by m plus n minus 1 should be equal to the occupied cells. So m stands for the number of rows, n stands for the number of columns. 
So you have total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 rows and sorry, 3 rows and 4 columns and it comes up to 3 plus 4 minus 1, 6. Now how many cells have been occupied? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means there is no degeneracy and we can proceed on to find the initial basic feasible solution. So using a calculus, we can find out what this is. 1015. So this is the initial basic feasible solution as per Northwest rule. Now we'll move on to finding the initial basic feasible solution as per the least cost method. Same principle of allocating and cancelling out but what changes here is the criterion on which we choose the cell onto which we allocate our amount. In this rule what we do is we find the cell with the least cost element and allocate the maximum to that cell. So here which is the least cost element? It should be this one. Yeah. This cell having a cost element of 8 has the least cost element. The maximum amount which can be allocated to 8 is the lower of 8 or 18. The amounts of its corresponding row and column. So we allocate 8 here. With that, we cancel out that column. Now the next cell which has the least amount is this one. Yeah. So here, the maximum we can allocate is the lower of 7 or 14. So we allocate, lower being 7, we allocate 7 and with that we cancel out these two cells. Now which is the cell with the least amount? 70, 40, 40, 40. Yeah, this is the one. This cell has the least cost in the remaining ones. Here we can allocate what remains in 14 after allocating 7 here which is 7 or what remains in 18 after allocating 8 which is 10. So lower of 7 and 10 being 7, we allocate 7, with that we cancel out this column. Now the cell with the least cost, there are two 40s we can select whichever one we want. So I'm going with this. Here the maximum I can allocate is the lower of 7 or 9. Lower being 7, I allocate 7 here. By allocating 7 there, the cell has been cancelled out and automatically this is the only remaining cell in that row and to satisfy 9, there should be a balance of 2 here. Now this column has been, sorry, this row has been satisfied and finally a balance of 3 needs to be allocated here to satisfy this total and this comes up to 7 plus 3 plus 8, 18. So we have found out the initial basic, sorry, we have found out the allocation as per least cost. Now let's check the degeneracy. It should have been m plus n minus 1 which totals up to 6 and the number of cells should be occupied is also 6, should be 6 in order to not be degenerate. So here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our solution is not degenerate and we can proceed on to finding the initial basic feasible solution which comes up to 7 into 10 plus 2 into 70 plus 7 into 40 plus 3 into 40 plus 8 into 8 plus 7 into 20 and this comes up to 814 rupees. See you getting two solutions this is why we say we need to check the optimality of our problem. Okay, now we are moving on to finding the initial basic feasible solution as per the Vogel's approximation method. Now, among the three methods, this method tends to be the most accurate one. Predominantly because in Northwest rule, we didn't pay any attention to the individual cost elements here. We went by a rule of thumb by saying, yeah, we go to the northwest corner cell, we allocate and thereby we cancel out orders remaining and then we go to the next cell which is the northwest position, we allocate and that's how we went on. Here, even though we paid consideration to the individual cost elements or the, sorry, individual cost elements of each cell, the problem what happened was, at the same time, we couldn't compare the cells row and column wise. 
For instance, we went at 8 first and once we allocated for 8, we cancelled out that cell. There was a 30 remaining here which if had been available for allocation would have had more priority than allocating to this 40 because this has lesser cost, right? But in this solution, in this method, we pay consideration to all the rows and all the columns and their individual cost elements and for that we find penalty. For finding penalty, what we do is, we take the least cost element and second least cost element and take their difference for each row and each column. So in this row, the least cost element is 10. The second least cost element is 19, right? So the difference between the two is 9. 9 is the penalty for this row. For this row, the least cost element is 30, second least cost element being 40, and the difference between the two being 10 is the penalty for this row. Here it's 8 and 20, so the penalty 12. And for this column, it's 10 and 20, their difference being 10. Here it's 40 and 50, their difference being again 10. Here it's 8 and 30, their difference being 22. Here it's 40 and 19, their difference being 21. So we found out the penalties. So once again, penalty is the difference between the least cost element and the second least cost element of the corresponding row or column. Now once we have found out the penalty, what we do is we find the penalty which is the highest. Here it's 22. So we take this column for our first allocation and in this column we go to the cell with the least cost element. It's 8. I'll repeat the process once again. We find the penalty by taking the difference between the cost element which is the least position, is the lowest position and the second lowest position. Take the difference. That is the penalty. Once the penalties have been found, we find which is the highest penalty and in this position, sorry, in this case it's 22 and 22 corresponds to this column and in this column we find the cell with the least cost element and allocate. So here it's 8 and we allocate a lower, we allocate the maximum permissible amount which is the lower of 8 or 18 and it's 8. With that, these two have been cancelled. Now we find penalty again. Here, which are the two least titles? It's 19 and 10, so remains as 9. Here 30 has been cancelled out. Now the least cost elements are these two. 40 and 60, we have a total of 20. Here 8 has been cancelled out. So the next two lower cost elements are 20 and 40. So we have 20. Here is the same 10. Here is the same again, 10, here there is nothing and here it's 20, what the same. So which is the highest penalty? This one. So in the corresponding column, which is the lowest cost element, it's this cell which has the lowest cost element and here we allocate the maximum permissible amount which is the lower of 5 or 7. 5. We allocate and with that, we cancel out the column. Now, again, we find penalty. So here what remains is just these two. So the difference being 40 is the penalty. Here is just these two. So it's 20. Here it's 70 minus 20. It's 50. Here is the same 10. Here is the same 10. So maximum penalty here is 50. So the corresponding row being this and the cell with the least cost element being this one. We allocate the maximum permissible amount which is the lower of 14 or the difference or the balance in 18 which remains after allocating 8 here which is 10. So we allocate 10 here and with that we cancel out this cell. Now finally we find one more penalty.
Here is 50 minus 10, 40. Here is 40 minus 60, that's 20. Here is 10 minus 60, which is 50. And 50 minus 40, which is 10. So the highest penalty being this one. We go to the corresponding column and find the cell with the least cost element. And that being this one, we allocate the maximum permissible amount, which is the lower of either what remains in this column, which is 14 after 10, which is 4, or which can be allowed to this row, which is 2. So the amount which is permissible here is 2. This has been cancelled out. And with 2 being allocated there, to satisfy 14, we need another 2 over here. And since 2 has been allocated there, to satisfy 9, we need a balance of 7. Now that 7 satisfies this 7. And that's the allocation as per Vogel's approximation method. Now to check the degeneracy as per m plus n minus 1 rule. Total number of rows 4, total number of columns 3. Sorry, total number of rows 3, total number of columns 4. So 3 plus 4, 7, minus 1, 6 should be the number of cells that are occupied. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 cells are occupied, so there is no degeneracy. We can proceed on to finding the initial basic feasible solution. This I leave it up to you guys because it's just nothing more than calculator business. So find it out and there you will have the initial basic feasible solution. In the next video, we'll find out how to do an optimality check, a balancing check and a case where the problem is degenerate. Thank you.